Hello everyone, I'm Katrina and today I'm going to be going through all of the books that I acquired in the month of September. I told myself I would cut down, but things happened that didn't quite work out, let's just jump straight in. I unboxed four subscription boxes in September, so if you wanted to take a look at what books I got in those, I'll have the videos linked in the description. I'll begin with some of the Bloomsbury books that I picked up in September. A couple of these are advanced copies, a couple of them I got myself, and if you guys aren't aware, I do work for Bloomsbury Australia. But the first book that I have here is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, and this sounds like it's kind of a murder mystery mixed with Groundhog Day, and on the back it says Gosford Park meets Inception by way of Agatha Christie. The Hardcastle family is hosting a masquerade at their home and their daughter Evelyn Hardcastle will die and that is she will die every day until Aiden is able to identify her killer and break the cycle. So this day that this masquerade is happening it repeats itself time and time again and what's really interesting is that Aiden will actually wake up each day in a different body. So he wakes up in the body of one of the guests at this party which is very fascinating and we'll just kind of relive that day until he finds her killer. Super cool. I'm very, very excited for this one. So this is coming out on the 8th of February in 2018 in the UK. It will be the 1st of March in Australia and New Zealand. Learning to Swear in America by Katie Kennedy is about an asteroid that is on its way to hit Earth. We follow Yuri, who is a physics prodigy from Russia, who has been called to NASA as they try and figure out how to stop this asteroid. The thing is, Yuri knows how to do this, but because he's only 17, no one is going to listen to him. Amidst all of this happening as well, he meets a girl named Doug who I think is kind of just living life as if the asteroid isn't about to hit. Sing Unbury Sing by Jasmine Ward. This has just been long listed for the Fiction National Book Award Prize, which is very exciting and I decided that I might as well give this a try. This book has multiple perspectives. We follow Jojo, Leone and Richie. From what I can gather from the synopsis, Jojo is a 13 year old boy who's trying to figure out what it means to be a man. Leone is his mother who is struggling with her circumstances. Her husband is in jail and when he is released from prison, packs up her kids and a friend into her car and drives to the heart of Mississippi, the state penitentiary. I think there's also a ghost of a dead inmate as well, which sounds very interesting, so very much looking forward to picking this one up. And of course, I also picked up Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Mass. So this is from Kale's perspective. The events of Tower of Dawn happen parallel to Empire of Storms. I still have to read Empire of Storms, and once I've done that, then I will dive into this bad boy. I'm sure that you guys know what this series is about, but if you're not aware, the first book, Throne of Glass follows Selena Sardothian, who is an assassin. She had been captured and then she's approached with an offer to compete in this kind of competition and the winner will become the king's personal assassin. So that's what happens in the first book. This isn't technically the sixth book, um, but it does happen parallel to the fifth, so I'm not going to go into any more details about it. I also added more to my Nevernight Chronicle collection. I have the German edition of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I wasn't originally going to pick this up, but I kept seeing pictures of it. Red pages and the naked cover as well is just absolutely stunning. So I decided to get it. Nevernight follows Mia Corvia. When she was younger, she witnessed her father being hanged for treason and she wants to take revenge. And in order to do so, she decides to join the Red Church, which is basically a school for assassins. So that is what happens in the first book, Nevernight. She's training to become an assassin. It is epic. I've done a review of the book. Link down below. And then I picked up four copies of the sequel, God's Grave. We have the Australian paperback of God's Grave. This one was sent to me by the publisher. So thank you so much, Harper Voyager, for sending this one my way. And of course, I did get them all signed, so epic! There's also the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of God's Grave, which has extra content and fan art. It's amazing! The exclusive Waterstones edition of God's Grave, which has these black sprayed edges, and the exclusive Goldsboro edition, which has the blue sprayed edges. So now I've got a lot of copies of God's Grave, even more copies of Nevernight my babies. My lovely friend Piera also persuaded me to pick up a couple of red books this month and this is after weeks if not months of telling me that I needed to pick these books up. We have Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I honestly don't know much about Red Rising and I kind of want to go into this blind. What I do know is that it's science fiction though. That's about all that I really know but I've heard amazing things about it. Like I said Piera has been telling me to get this for ages so I finally picked it up because I do trust her opinion with books and hopefully I can get to this one soon. She's going to make me read it ASAP so 
You'll probably see this in a wrap-up in the next couple of months. I also picked up Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. Just based off of the synopsis, it's giving me kind of Never Night vibes, at least in just the general sense of the setting. We have the Convent of Sweet Mercy, which is a place where young girls are trained to be killers. Hello, assassins. We have Nona Gray, who is brought to the Convent of Sweet Mercy when she is eight, accused of murder, and it says, guilty of worse. Dun dun dun! So yeah, this follows her journey and being trained and stuff very excited, heard great things about it. I also picked up A Gathering of Shadows and A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. These are the second and third books in the Darker Shade of Magic series. I picked these two up because in September I reread A Darker Shade of Magic and I've been wanting to finish the series, which is why I reread the first book because it's been a couple of years. Now I have the next two books in the series, I have no excuse not to continue. In A Darker Shade of Magic we follow Kel, who is a blood magician. He is able to travel between different Londons, but it's kind of this anomaly that this one city is located in the same place in each world and all of them are called London. We have Grey London where there's not really any magic, there's Red London which has a lot of magic, there's White London which is a very dangerous place to be, and there's Black London which fell to magic centuries ago. So really enjoyed the first book, cannot wait to dive into these two. Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. This is our current Bibliothon book club pick. Emma from Emma Books has been absolutely raving about this one so I'm really excited to get into this. We follow Vivian who is absolutely fed up with the sexism in her high school so she decides to create a feminist zine. The zine is distributed anonymously and she's just kind of intending to blow off some steam but people actually start to respond. It becomes a thing and it kind of sparks a revolution so I'm really looking forward to getting into this girl power, feminism, yeah. I also picked up They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This was published in September. I did receive an advanced copy but I wanted to order myself a finished one because A I love the book, B I love this cover so I was like can I hazard please? I will be posting a spoiler free review of They Both Die at the End hopefully very soon so look forward to that. Basically in this book there is this thing called the death cast which calls you on the day that you're going to die and they basically just say hey you're gonna die in the next 24 hours, sort out everything that needs to be sorted and live your last day to the fullest. This follows Matteo and Rufus who have been called up by the death cast and on their end day um, they decide to match up with someone on this app called Last Friend. Matteo and Rufus are paired and it's about the things that they do on their last day and it's heartbreaking and beautiful and I loved it so review coming soon. I also did a trade this month to receive a copy of Witchwood by Tahera Mafi. This is the advanced copy. When's it coming out? November 2017. This is the companion to Furthermore which I don't think you need to have read beforehand but probably would help. In Witchwood we follow Laylee whose mother had died and her father driven by grief lost his wits which means that she's the sole remaining Mordshaw in Witchwood and I think that this entails scrubbing the skins and souls of the dead in preparation for the afterlife which I don't think is something that she's very excited to do. And then it says a pair of familiar strangers appear and kind of turn her life upside down so I think this is going to have some wonderful friendships in here. Very excited also how stunning is that cover? Isn't it just absolutely beautiful. I also picked up Born by Jeff Vandermeer purely because of how bizarre it sounds. So it's set in the future and there's a city that lives in fear of a gigantic flying bear that's driven mad by the torches that have been inflicted upon him. Rachel, who is a scavenger, finds a creature entangled in its hair, which she names Born. And I think that this creature kind of looks like a green lump, but there's obviously much more to it than that. There are lots of secrets, this biotech firm called The Company, and I don't know, it just sounds so bizarre. So I decided to get it and see what I think of it. I also received a care package from Pantera Press this month as well. So thank you so much, Pantera, for sending these to me. Basically, I was the New South Wales rep for the Books on the rail campaign seven books in seven states. This campaign entailed one person in each state to drop some books on public transport and they were all books that were part of this series which was The Roland Sinclair Mysteries by Solari Gentil. I ended up doing a book drop for book two of the series on Sydney trains. In addition to these they also sent I think some postcards and a tea towel which was very very cool. In this series we have A Few Right Thinking Men, A Decline in Profits, Miles of Course, Paving the New Road, Gentlemen formally dressed, a murder unmentioned, give the devil his due, and the final one, a dangerous language. We follow Roland Sinclair living in Australia in the 1930s and I think he kind of gets entangled up in these murder mysteries, solving them, stuff like that. Sounds very cool so hopefully I can start the series at some point. We shall see. I've got 
the first eight books at least to keep me going. I also picked up the second book in the Grisha trilogy, Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. I believe it was in August that I picked up the first and the third book in the series, but in the bookstores that I was looking in in the city, they didn't have the second book for some reason. But when I was in Melbourne, I checked out one of the bookstores. They had the book, so I snatched it up. I forgot to share one of the other Bloomsbury books that I had as well, which was The Winner's Kiss by Marie Rutkowski. This is the third book in the Winner's Trilogy. The first one, The Winner's Curse, follows Kestrel, who is a general's daughter, and she is basically destined to either join the military or find a husband. And she doesn't really want either of those. And one day she just finds herself buying a slave at an auction, and I think he's got some secrets and stuff as well. I have read the first book in the series, really enjoyed it. For some reason I just didn't end up buying the second and the third book in the series so now I have the third book thanks to my co-worker but I don't have the second one so I'll get there one day. We also have Now I Rise by Kirsten White which is the sequel to And I Darken which I have not read but again my co-worker thanks to her she's um, getting rid of some of the books on her shelves and she was giving away this one and I was like hey, I'll probably get around to that series at some point, so I would like that one, please. The first book, though, is kind of a retelling of Vlad the Impaler, but with a female character. We have Lada, who is a princess. Sounds fabulous. I also won a giveaway over on Instagram as well. I received a box full of just merch and bookish goodies, as well as an arc of All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stevata. I don't know too much about this one, but I do know that it's set in a town called Bico Raro in Colorado, which is full of dark saints for Forbidden Love, Scientific Dreams, Miracle Mad Owls, Estranged Affections, One or Two Orphans, and A Sky Full of Watchful Desert Stars. I also really like the cover of this as well. Hey look, there's an owl. Yeah, hopefully I can get to this one sometime soon. I'm currently reading The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stevata. Really enjoyed the first book, so yeah, let's see how I go. One of the multiple times that I travelled to Melbourne, I was bored at the airport and went browsing through the bookstore there, and I decided to pick up The Tiger and the Wolf by Adrian. Tchaikovsky, mainly because of this gorgeous cover. How stunning is that? This is a fantasy book and the main character, I think it's Manie, I'm not 100% sure the pronunciation. If you guys know, please let me know. But she is the daughter of the chief of the wolf clan. Her mother is the queen of the tiger clan and these two are enemies. So obviously she's a bit of an outcast, but she's also hiding a secret. The members of each of these tribes are able to shift into their clan's animal form and she's actually able to shift into a wolf and a tiger. Unable to disown basically half of her being, she decides to escape and the killer broken axe is in pursuit. Sounds really cool. I hope I like it. If any of you guys have read it, let me know what you thought. I was so close to fitting everything on here. I've got one more book to show you and that one is Medallon by Jennifer Fallon. So as I mentioned in a book haul or two ago, I kept seeing some of Jennifer Fallon's books at book sales, book fairs and things like that. After hearing how Piera Ford really enjoyed her books, I decided to pick one of them up and I did pick up a different one of her series earlier on this year, but when I was with her in Melbourne she told me to start with this book, which is the first in the Demon Child series. And to be honest, I don't know anything about it, I bought it because she told me to. My camera is about to die because I've been talking for way too long, so that actually concludes... No, it doesn't. Oh my god, I have two more books. Sorry! The last two books that I have to show you are Monstrous Volumes 1 and 2 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takada. I've been hearing so many great things about Monstrous, so when I saw it, I decided to pick them up. Can I just say how incredible the illustrations are? It's full colour. It is absolutely beautiful. Very bloody as well. Love it. But, um, yeah. Okay. Like I said, battery's about to die. I'm gonna go. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this book haul. Now I have to figure out how to put all of these books on the shelf. That's for future cast to worry about. But I will see you very soon in a new video. But until then, I will talk to you in the comments. Bye!